Hey everybody, this week we're going to see about hooking up a backup camera. I'm not going to use it for backing up, I'm mostly going to use it for traffic. Anyways, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to We Love to Camp. I'm Andy. This week, I'm going to be attempting to wire up this wireless rear view camera kit. It's made by Do Honest, and it's a fairly modest priced one. It's not expensive. Right here's the model number, and here's how much it cost. It's supposed to be fairly easy, it's supposed to be pretty decent, and all that good stuff. It's got a monitor that goes on the dash of your truck that will not be mounted permanently on my truck because it's a daily driver more than it is a tow rig. But when it comes down to that part of the job, it will be done pretty cool, I hope. This deal, this is the camera. This camper is pre-wired. Don't know what that means. I don't know what wires we've got back there for this, but it's pre-wired. Yay. So let's uh, get up on the ladder and find out what's going on. Hopefully I don't break my legs again. So according to the instructions, which is nothing that another man's opinion, don't forget that. They request that you test this out before you install it. That makes sense. It's a good idea. What's neat is they give us this neat little plug. And what it is, you've got, are you going to focus? There we go. You loose up those two screws, and then you slide the wires in, and then you tighten them down. Remember, if you don't have a black wire, then white is going to be negative. So we got red for positive, white for negative. And that's how I have them wired up. Score. So this goes to two plugs. One plug goes to the camera, and one goes to the monitor, and then we got this. Plugs into a cigarette lighter or PowerPoint these days, and it actually has an on-off switch here. Click on, click off. Okay, so we're in the truck to go ahead and test this out. 2018 Ford F-150, nothing special here. Um, I've got it all hooked up plugged in and in theory as soon as I hit the power button on the 12 volt adapter plug I think it's supposed to all fire up let's see what happens now I've got nothing installed it's just sitting on the dash plugged in there and that bad boy is just looking out the window so let's see what happens power on All right, here we go. Wait a minute. That's interesting. I'll have to check the instructions to see if that's supposed to do that. Now I am noticing it said no, and now it's gone. It said no SD card. So I'm gonna have to put an SD card in this. I've got a couple extras. That's not a big deal. But hey, look at that, it works. Now to mount it all. This big giant screen, which, I mean, the thing is kind of ginormous, but this huge screen also comes with a suction cup to where I can stick it to the windshield. I'll block half of the windshield, but, you know, hey. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing with this thing yet. So for now, I'm just going to leave this in here, and I'll just use the cigarette lighter plug I'm not going to hard mount, I'm not going to hard wire. I'm just gonna kinda let this go for now. That's something I can I can deal with later and won't take a whole lot of time when I'm doing it. It'll take a minute to wire it. I don't like seeing wires. What I would probably end up doing, wherever it comes, if I'm gonna mount it right here, obviously not, but if I would mount it right here, then I would have the cord just dangle out here unplug it just kind of tuck it in and it disappears uh yeah like that camera 
that wire just disappears. But now I want to get the hard part done, and that's this. It does come with this pigtail on it, and there is an adapter that came in the box. I didn't look into it, didn't see what it's about, but it looked a lot like the 3.5 millimeter jack that the headphones use. It looked a lot like that. Let's get the ladder out, try not to fall off of it, and uh, see what all is involved here. The things I go through for you guys, I gotta get up here and set this thing up on the neighbor's garage roof. Furion wireless observation or backup camera pre-install mount kit. Plug and play installation less than 15 minutes. Uh, FOS48TA-BL wireless high speed observation system. I don't know if their cameras are that bad, but I've heard that they're, you know, that bad. I'm not sure what to find underneath here. Uh -huh. About to lose a screw. It's a safe place to put it, huh? if that was hooked up. That would be hooked up looking right at me. No, I did grab an SD card. I don't know if this uh, unit is supposed to record or if it just needs memory room for its own use or what, I don't know. I believe the adapter that they sent me plugs into this. Let me see. I'm pretty sure I put it in my pocket. That sure feels like a winner. It came with this adapter. You got that plug, which plugs into the camera. And then, like I said earlier, it looks like a headphone jack. Plugs right in. Snap, done. And then I plug this into that. And then I've got to try and figure out how to mount this. I'm gonna mount it on here. So it's gonna be like this. Something like ish. I'm gonna take this down and do it on the bench. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a notch right here. Just big enough for that cord to come out. And then I'm gonna bolt this on here. Of course, then I won't be able to put the screws in. Yeah, well, I got it figured out. This is the little dealer rock that was covering it. Once you get it pulled off, this is what's inside of it. And it's just a plug. Yeah, I know I said workbench, but the tailgate will work. So you use a block of wood, two by four, whatever you got, so that you're not drilling, when you drill through the plastic or whatever it is you're drilling through, go into the wood, not into your tailgate. So for this, which I've already done this off camera, so you know, there we go. What I did, what I did is I drilled a hole in the bottom of the plate and then I cut it to where it's now a U shape or a, I don't know, whatever shape you want to call that. So what the plan is, this bolts up in the back of the back wall. This sits like this actually. So now what I need to do is bolt that up to this plastic piece just like this and then tuck this into that little hole like that. And I can screw this flush onto the bracket, onto the uh, cover. And then I mount this up there and boom, I've got a camera. It came with additional goodies. There's an Allen wrench that's for adjusting this, or actually tightening it and loosening it. And then there's also other little holes. You can see, there you go. You can see there. 
you see these slots right here, right here and right here. That is for adjusting the head to go down and up. And inside here, there's a little hole. There we go, you can see it right there. And what that's for is it comes with more of those little Allen bolts. You stick a couple of them in there and it locks the head aimed in whatever direction it is you want it aimed at. Then there's some other stuff here. There's some self-tapping screws, um, some screws, and here we go. I like those. I don't want just the threads holding it onto the thin piece, thin piece of plastic. So I'm going to use the small screws with the lock bolts, or lock nuts. There's no such thing as a lock bolt. Put all these up here in this little cup holder. Okay. This we'll need, but not yet. Uh, we need some of these. We're just going to go to. Now, the one thing I do need to make sure of, you see the mounting mounting holes? There's one up on the top, and then now there's one on the bottom. I need to make sure I don't cover those with the bracket. Just your regular paint marker. I don't know if it works. I bought this like a decade ago. Okay, I think I like that. So you see, got the screw mounting points not covered. Uh, kind of hard to see there, but yeah, there's a hole and there's a hole. I know it's blurry, I'm sorry. And then I've got these points right here, the slider, and then one on the other side. It's not really a slider, but it's a, a slot. There we go. Proper terminology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint marker and mark a dab there and a dab up here and then the same thing on the other side. And then I can take this off, drill holes, and continue. Just like that. There we go. You know you've drilled through far enough when you start getting wood chips coming up. I'll do this on camera so you know what I'm talking about. All right, you can see the red dots. Just put your drill bit on there and don't just go full throttle. See how the plastic comes up? And then wood. When the drill goes through, it leaves a very ugly edge, and it's a little bit protruding, a little bit um, unfinished. And I just go through there and I just clean it off with the blade. You can also use a larger drill bit and just chamfer the hole a little bit. I'll do that for metal fabrication, but not on plastic. That's going a bit too far. Yeah, there. That's how much was protruding. We're back up here, getting ready to do the final bits of the install. I said, all this is bolted together. I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm gonna stuff all this wiring up in here. Or at least as much of it as I can. There we go. There we go. This is 
beautiful. Now I need a screw. Uh, yes, I got one screw in there and I can let go. Now, Ziploc baggy. That's what I have it adjusted for right now. It's not really shooting down, it's shooting out. I am going to turn on the parking lights. Come in here. This is your seven way plug. You see the blind spline right here, the, the notch there. Those two wires, those two plugs, terminals, you plug a fuse in there, or a, I use a relay, but you plug a fuse in there, and the whole time that's plugged in, your lights are on. I love doing that. So, I plug that in, and hit the power, it comes on. You can have a regular flat screen, or you can have the eyebrow over it. If you have it on your windshield, that will help keep the sun glare off of the top off the screen as of now i'm going to give this kit right now an a plus it was easy to hook up it was easy to figure out and it works works great beautiful picture huge screen if this is going to be a tow rig a full-time tow rig i would have that that screen mounted somewhere semi-permanently since this is more of a commuting rig and part-time tow rig then that's just gonna be sitting in the camper until we go and take off, and then I'll bring it up here and plug it in. So my installation is not completely perfect, it's not completely done anyways, but it will be, and I'll probably cover that later on. But so far, this is a huge A+, it works great. All right, everybody. Hope you can hear me okay, I hope the audio is okay. I do not have my microphone. I'm on the initial shakedown run with the new camera. It's great for the money, but it's not a great camera. I still have to play with it and see what I can do. It, the refresh rate is way too low. It's, uh, as the boy would say, he's a junior gamer, he would say it's glitchy. It's like frame, then frame, then frame, instead of just projection, instead of just motion picture type not enough frames per second. I think there's a potato up there that's wired up being used as a camera. However, even a potato is 11 billion times better than having nothing at all. This thing will work great for backing up. It works to let me know if there's somebody tailgating me. It lets me know at a stoplight if there's somebody right behind me where you know I need to move out or I can take my time. I can see that I've got 12 people behind me. Well, if there's that many people, I can see them out here, but you know what I'm saying. But all in all, the ease of hookup was really, really, really easy. The worst part about hookup is getting on a ladder. And if you can get on a ladder, yeah, you're fine. It is that simple to hook up. Wiring was a simple nothing. It was plug in an adapter, plug that adapter into the trailer, and mount it and adjust it. That was it. That was it. And then in here, it's literally just sitting on the dashboard right now because I still haven't figured out where, where and how I'm gonna mount it. I've got ideas. I've got ideas. But it's just sitting on the dashboard and it's working great. And I got it plugged into the cigarette lighter. You know, old school. So. That was even easier. Here's where it really does shine. I'm doing this without a spotter. Going into my storage unit, storage spot, whatever. 
and you can see I know when to stop. Now, oops, now I need to get out and look. Let's see what we have. Well, it's a little crooked still, but yeah, that's not too bad. I don't really want to stick it to the windshield. It is technically illegal in Ohio. Yeah, I know. What if I put it right there? It doesn't really hurt field of view that much. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit there, but you know, right here is eye level. So that's not too bad. Now, how can I do this? I want to make it good. Well, I've got an idea. Now you'll see this doesn't quite go down all the way. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Peel that out. And I grabbed a piece of metal from work. This is just a piece of metal. You can literally get it, get it anywhere. So I'm going to trim it, drop it down in there, and it'll actually go on top of this. So this is my template. It's got to fit between A and B. So trim this to fit down in there. Then take the bracket and bolt it on here and then have spacers lifting it up off of that metal plate. That way, it's not down in there. It's spacers with sticking up and up in the air. Then that way, not only could I just grab the entire thing, you know, plate and all, whenever we get done camping, I just take the entire thing, boom, unplug it, and go put it in the camper. And if I want to tow with a different tow rig for some reason, this one's in the shop and I'm using a, a borrowed or a rental or whatever, then boom, all I gotta do is grab it, set it in the, in the other vehicle, and go. I think this just might work. Now what the goal is here is I'm gonna cut off that seven inches, then I'm gonna drill a couple holes and mount this bad boy in there. And then it's gonna sit like this. I was going to have it like that and have it spaced up so, it, so this clears the well on the cubby hole. But instead, I'm actually just going to angle it like that, angle it towards the driver. One thing you need to remember, if you have that, let me see if I, there we go. If you have this sitting on your dashboard, you're gonna get all kinds of nasty reflections up onto your windshield. So this is going to get painted. Plus, I don't want it to rust. There's a couple different ways that you can do this and cut the metal. You can use a jigsaw with a blade. You can use a bandsaw if you have nice shop equipment. Um, all kinds of stuff to cut it with. You can use cutoff wheel like this. Whatever it takes. Or if you don't have anything, you could always go to Home Depot or whatever where you purchased it and ask them to cut it to whatever size it is you need. They'll be more than happy to charge you to do that. Me, I'm going to go ahead and use a grinder with a cutoff wheel on it and throw all kinds of sparks everywhere. Hopefully I don't mess up my clothes because I'm not wearing work clothes. We are talking about sparks and hot metal and all that good stuff, so if you have some good gloves, get them. It's a good idea. Safety glasses are a must. You already saw that. joke around a lot about safety but safety first 
There's one other thing I want to do here with this piece before I start drilling it. So that was a thin cutoff wheel or a wafer wheel, but it's a really, really, really thin, rigid wheel. And what I'm going to use is a tiger paw to clean up the edges. That's what a tiger paw is. Very, very, very high abrasive layers. Like that. And what I want to do here, so you'll see these cuts that were here when I got it, they're all fairly nice. This one's a little sharp. This one's not bad. This one's not bad. But this is the one that I just did. You can see metal hanging off the sides of it. You can see grooves in it. That will make you bleed. So I'm going to clean this up. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this one up a little bit too. And all I'm going to do is just round the edges. There we go. Round the edges a little bit. Or quite a bit. That's all it takes. Now see, that was the decent edge. That was the messed up edge and it looks pretty good. In the manufacturing process and in the shipping process, storage and everything, they put oil on this metal to keep it from rusting. So just a quick shot with some brake clean. That takes off all the oil. It also takes off any oil that I put on there with my hands. Just give it a quick little blast and I'll wipe down with a rag or paper towels. Here, see how nasty that looks? Ventilation, don't huff it. Read the instructions if you're unfamiliar with the stuff. There you go, look how clean that is. That should be the ideal angle for me. It's showing up on there. It's showing up on there a little bit. So now all I need a little boop there, a little boop there. Yeah, that was sloppy. And now we got a drill. The only hardware I found lying around quarter inch screw and nut. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit through these slots. Well, okay, I'll take that back. It threads into the holes. I may end up hogging out these slots a little bit. We'll see when it comes time to bolt it all together. So I've got options. I like having options. Drill the holes. You don't start off with a large bit. You start off with something small and you do a pilot hole and then you hog it out with that. You can do it with one bit, but that bit won't last long. That's how you dole them out. Now you guys remember when I was drilling on that plastic piece, remember how I said the back of the piece that you just drilled will often have ugly burrs. So what I'm going to use a step bit or a unibit and basically I'm just going to go to one size bigger and just lightly go in it a little bit just to countersink the bolt head maybe but to get rid of this mess. Now, because of hobby car stuff, I happen to have a lot of this stuff lying around. Just like paint cabinet. Now remember, I'm concerned about glare in the windshield. So I don't want to paint it red. I don't want to paint it yellow. I don't want to paint it orange. I want to go black. And I've got 
I've got some gloss black back here. No. Uh, Semi-gloss and satin. I'm going to go with satin. And this is a Rust-Oleum. Not the best paint, but it's a very good paint. No, that's not black. And shake like crazy. And then once that side is dry, come back out, flip it over, rinse, lather, repeat. And I'm done with that. And I'm done for the night. Let the whole thing dry over the night. Come back out here in the morning, bolt this on it and head out to the truck. Okay, it's the next morning. It's actually afternoon, but whatever. This is done, it's dried, it looks nice. Look at the not shiny surface. Nice dull sheen. That's perfect for what we need. And you know, the world's not over when you make a mistake like that. See right there, I'm off by half a hole. It's not the end of the world. Let's see here. <laughs> and whichever one of you that just said that I should be wearing gloves, you're right. You are 11 billion percent right. I should be. Always wear your gloves when you're doing something like this. There we go. Okay. Fixed it. And once it's all put together, nobody will ever know. And there it is in position. For now, I'm just going to use this. I do eventually, I think I'm going to drill a hole down here in the corner where it's completely out of sight to anybody. They'll never even see it. And then run a cord underneath the dash and hook it up to an outlet that I'll end up putting in there. And I'll probably rerun this wire and do the same thing. I don't like the way this is run because it's actually right here. And it plugs in down, right down there. Not a fan of that. But it's, you know, not going anywhere. It's fairly stable. I can adjust it a little bit. You see, I don't have any sun glaring off the, the screen. And also, no reflections in the glass. So that's a total win. I've got a little bit right back straight behind it. But it's, that's it. So that's going to be it on this one, finally. This is still a really easy project, still a really, I'm going to call it a pretty decent setup. It's like I said, it's not the perfect, it's a little glitchy, like the boy would say, but it's, for the money, it's good. It's a, it's a cheap unit. I do have another camera that I'm going to see if I can't put on this and run two cameras. I think that's out of the campground and that'll be a campground. That'll be a camping trip experiment. Well, if it succeeds or if it fails, you guys will know about it. I'll post it up on here, but I like the way this came out. I think everything looks good. I like, I like it. I don't think I've asked yet, but uh, do me a favor and click the like and the subscribe and all that good stuff. Leave a comment underneath. That helps a lot with getting our videos out to people who are actually wanting to get to our videos. Does that make sense? It helps the it helps the algorithm recommend it. Tell me in the comments, how many of you have backup cameras? How many of you use them? How many refuse to have them? I'll tell you what, I have one on the truck itself. It makes hooking up a breeze. And now I've got one on the trailer and that's gonna make backing into the 
campsite real easy, which it's already pretty easy, but it's gonna make it that much easier now. If I don't see you in the comments, we'll see you at the campground. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.